Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to talk about troubleshooting AC motors, or really AC circuits in general. I was over at the Making Foundation, which is a local nonprofit that works with middle and high school kids to encourage learning by hands-on experience, and their table saw wasn't working. So I went over there to help them troubleshoot, and it's one of those moments where I'm like, oh man, I really need to do a video on that. So I've taken one of our trainers and kind of modified it to represent a table saw or really any 110 volt equipment that you would plug in an outlet or really any 220 volt or 40 volt or really any AC equipment. Please take a minute to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. And while we don't do a lot of motor and three phase videos, we have done several of them recently and they have been very popular. So if there's something you'd like to learn about, about three phase power, or general electricity, let us know in the comments and we'll see what we can do. Basically, I have it so switch one turns on the green light. Now, this exercise will not work with your trainer because our trainers are set up with 24 volt inputs and I've modified this one to be 120. And what I mainly want to talk to you about today is the difference between a non-contact voltage sensor when troubleshooting and a volt meter. Now first, I'm not bashing the non-contact voltage sensor. These are super important, especially in lockout tagout procedures. And yeah, man, we probably ought to do some videos on that because these could save your life. But if you run a non-contact voltage sensor across a wire, you'll know whether it has AC power without actually piercing the wire or exposing any of the conductors. Now this only works with AC and we'll talk about that near the end of the video. And so if you touch your motor lead, you get the same thing. We switch switch one off and our power goes away. So I got a call and they were asking whether I had a temperature switch for a motor. Now from our single phase motor teardown video, we learned that most of your single phase motors will have a temperature switch in them. And they thought that that was the problem. And they had done a really good job of troubleshooting it because they switch switch one on and they were getting no motor power. They checked it with their non-contact voltage sensor. They had power going to the saw and they checked their motor and they had power going to their motor, but the motor wasn't turning. So if you've watched a lot of my videos, then this diagram is going to start to seem really familiar. This is the one we've used so much for wiring PLC inputs and outputs where you can plug in what your input is and you figure out what type of sensor you need, things like that. I'll put a link to that video in the description. But with a slight bit of modification, we can come up with your typical motor circuit that you'll see on table saws, or really any motor, any, well, even your light switch at your house. This is exactly how it works. So you have an AC source and in 110 volt case, that would be an L1 and a neutral and L1 is gonna go up to a switch, and then it's gonna go on to a motor, and then it's gonna come back to the neutral. So in the case of our non-contact voltage sensor, we're checking that we have power, which is right here, and that our switch is good because we have power on this side. So it looks like we have power to our motor, but just like on our sinking and sourcing videos, this last little bit of the leg often gets forgotten. And what we found out, it was actually this circuit. Let's we'll go ahead and flip this trainer around so we can see what I've done to make it break. So here is our power wire, and I've kind of simulated the exact break that they had is that the neutral contact was loose. So when you check for power, which was this one, you had power. When you check the one going the motor, you have power going down there. But this checks just for voltage present. This doesn't actually check that we have current flow. So if we take our meter and put it on AC voltage, if we test the top of this, then we're gonna have 120 volt. But if we test the bottom of this, then we're going to have zero volt because I've taken this contact loose to simulate that break that we had. So there's a little bit of difference in troubleshooting between a non-contact voltage sensor and a voltmeter. Again, I'm not saying these things are bad. These things can save your life. If you're locking a machine out, you need to probe around and see whether you have voltage or not. Now, I mentioned earlier that these only work on AC. They won't work on DC. 
Does anyone know why? Put your thoughts down in the comments because it's going to be one of our upcoming videos. Till next time. Hi, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.